But prior to me going to jail, I had just got big and you know, realized how, how great Jay Dilla was and just getting understanding the importance of what my city had brought to the table, you know? Because me growing up, man, hearing fucking beach rhymes in life, and you know what I'm saying? I didn't hear no Jay Dilla. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like, that was Detroit shit. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like hearing fucking Busta Rhymes albums and hearing certain songs, that was Detroit shit. But I didn't know because it was marketed to me as New York shit. New York shit. No, but that was our shit though, you know? Because Detroit, you could say we never had a sound, but that's our sound in some sense, you know, as far as rap go. Hi, my name is Daniel, and welcome to my neighborhood. <laughs> when I was born, I was took to this house. Like this house, <laughs> this man. Is, <laughs> this is my so you got to think about this house. I was born at Henry Ford Hospital, which is not too far from here. Literally, probably ten minute drive, five minute drive. We lived here till I was in the first grade, and then that's when we moved to the east side. East side a whole nother world, man. It, it played a lot a part of how my personality is, you know? They encouraged me to rap. I was like the only black kid in class damn there. That was just cool to them, like, oh, he can rap. Cause then when I got to middle school and I went to like an all black school, it was like, this shit damn right. Totally different. <laughs> totally different. Like, this shit not in day. Nigga was beating me up there every day. <laughs> I was like, this shit ain't, this shit ain't, ain't supposed to be like this, man. <laughs> and I was sixth grade. You get what I'm saying? Nigga shooting, nigga stabbing, niggas dead. I'm like, the fuck is going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> so I told my mom, I don't want to go to that school no more. <laughs> Got a nigga awesome. On the east side and the west side, it's two different levels of balling. Like, east side niggas, like, he'd be the dirtiest nigga in class, but he'd whip out $5,000 out of his pocket. You know? But he got him jogging pants and a raggedy ass t shirt. A west side nigga, he'd be fresh head to toe, have a Rolex on, some ill shit, but don't even got $2. You know what I'm saying? So when I came over on the west side, niggas, everybody was fresh. Niggas coming to school, getting picked up in Corvettes. And, Niggas driving to school with the whole shit them flip now. It's like, damn, it's a whole nother level. Like, I thought I was balling with just being fresh, but now I ain't really fresh no more. These niggas, they, they wearing Versace and all type of other shit. Like, I was flying first, I just still ain't know how to put it together. Polo shirt that was purple, but it had the pink man. I bought that bitch like a 3X, that bitch was big as hell. I bought like some blue, like royal blue, bright like blue. Polo like chino khakis, dumb. And some white and green Air Force Ones. Like, how did that? Like, people was like, man, this nigga is, you crazy, man. She don't even match. Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not about matching from head to toe. So I'm still, to me, back then, I was just ahead of my time, like always. But they respected the fresh. Like, yeah, nigga. Like, so I was instantly, like, popular, instantly hanging with the cool kids, instantly getting all the girls and shit. So I was happy. I was happy in the eighth grade, man. Yeah. I pretty much dropped to school when I was 16, but I just went every day. But I didn't go to not one class. I was the guy that would look in your door and be making faces. That was that kid. I mean, I just came to show off my clothes, you know? <laughs> but I had it mapped out. Like, I would come to school late. Because if you came to school late for first period, then they send you to the cafeteria, then you start second period. And they'll do the same thing. Because some people didn't have first period, they had second period. So I keep my coat on and act like I came to school late second period, too. So I stay in that for two periods. Third period come lunch start. So I go to lunch, third, fourth, and fifth. Six, I just stand in front of the school. Everybody get out at the six and seven. That was my day, every day. I wasn't even smoking weed then. I was just skipping school. I got a studio actually not too far from here that I just opened up. So we should probably go over there and check that out too if I want to. We just, we just really got it a couple weeks ago fully running. So everything's new. I haven't even really been recording here yet. My pops, he was most of my biggest influence with hip hop. Man, I listened to whatever he would bring in the house, you know? And he brought Wu-Tang in the house, you know what I'm saying? Like I missed the whole early, like the whole digging in the crate stages, the whole Laura Finesse and you know what I'm saying, showbiz. I missed all that side of the East Coast rap because I was listening to West Coast rap then. I was listening to Spice One and 
You know what I'm saying? E40. And my dad, he probably seen how that probably wasn't a good influence on me at that time. Because Wu-Tang, it still gave you that edge. But they were still preaching like 5% shit. You know what I'm saying? So they still had jewels inside the shit. So I know he was, he wanted, that's what he wanted. You know? I wanted the sign of Foods go. A mecca. Seen um, Nick catch it up in the burrito spot. He's like, yo, y'all should sign Danny Brown. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, all right, we'll see. Two weeks, it was done. It's a Skywalker's car. He just got this car not too long ago, but this is like the total representation of Detroit right here is this car. You can't get no more Detroit than the fucking Cadillac Brome, man. But this is just like a staple pimp car, man. Like back when I was a kid, if you had this car, you had hoes for sure. Like most people like want like cutlasses and like regals. This is like real pimp shit right here. I don't drive. I don't know how to drive. I never drove a car ever in my life. I think I'm too goofy with driving. I got a short attention span, man. I get freaked out. I don't know, maybe I'm, that's, everybody gotta be scared of something, right? So I don't know. I think I'm gonna die in a car crash or something, man. This is the, um, the east side, this is where um, I moved from off Linwood over here when I was in the first grade. And we moved to the east side because my mom's, see that house is originally my grandma's houses, you know? So that's where my mom's grew up, you know? So she got a house and she moved to the east side. And at the time it was a, um, it was a nice um, neighborhood. It was pretty, you know what I'm saying? It was pretty good over there compared to what it looked like today. But my grandma, she's the backbone of our entire family. You know what I'm saying? She had the good job at Chrysler. Do you know what I'm saying? So that one job bought all these houses, you know? She was able to buy houses for her daughters to move and make kids, cause you know what I'm saying? And that type of, so we all wanna be bunched up in one house on Montgomery, you know? And that's predominantly a lot of Detroit family stories. All around me like Terry Diva, Linda Wong, all in hell having orgies with our horns grow along cause bitch I'm Frankie Lyman. I wish man I could play basketball, I suck man, I'm just not athletic, I'm goofy man, I hurt myself, <laughs> sprain my ankle and shit like that, like you know, so. Every time I play basketball, my whole point of playing the game is to think I don't want to hurt myself. So I'm already playing scared out there now, you know, so I suck. I ain't got time for a nigga putting me in a post, boxing me out. <laughs> Coming down with the elbows <laughs> off a rebound. Yo, too. That's how my, this one got chipped. You know what I'm saying? You playing ball? Yeah, nigga rebound me, coming down off the rebound. <laughs> Boop! Because his tooth was so fucking big, it's hanging out my mouth probably. I already had my mouth open trying to get the rebound. I go to the dentist all the time now, and they like, fuck, you need to fix that tooth. I'd be like, man, wow. I really don't know if I can just do that right now. Like, 31 years old, so I've been through all that desert. You can make it out of anywhere. If I made it out of Detroit, that nigga made it out of Slumdog Millionaire. Like, you know what I'm saying? A nigga living in LA or New York, damn sure ain't got no excuse. You know? That's the realism of the whole shit. Like this, like I say, it's nothing for you to do. And most people just get caught up in that process. If you've never been anywhere else, then it's all it is to you. You'd be happy with this. You just live every day and then just die one day, you know? But when you go to other cities, you see it's other shit to do. Welcome to Detroit, man. <laughs> it ain't much, but it's mine. Woo, we got some activists.